Welcome back everyone. Today is December the 11th, 2013. My name is Frank Demore. I'm the author of the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. And you can download my book today for free. You're here at the End Times Research Ministry where I connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. So let me go right into the news because I'm going to be centering on the decline of America. Now anyone who has read my book already and anyone who has seen my live presentations and anyone who has been at my YouTube channel, you would have known all the warnings that I've given about the decline of America and how I believe America will decline. And part of that decline has to do with the devaluing of the dollar. And we're seeing that take place now. And over the course of the years, the amount of money purchasing power that the United States has with the dollar is shrinking. And this is one of the signs. And of course, there are many world leaders who would like to speed up this process, get rid of the dollar as the reserve currency, and get into another form of currency of which we know at the end of the day, the Antichrist will control. Whatever it is, he will be controlling it. So the United States, without a doubt, is declining in power. And part of the reason why they're declining is because they turned their face against God. If God says, don't burden yourselves over Jerusalem, and you have an administration trying to not only burden themselves over Jerusalem, in other words, give, it, give Jerusalem back to the PLO, who have lost it during the 1967 war, and also, Barack Obama is trying to divide up the land of Israel to give a, make a Palestinian state. And so when you do these things, you go against God. Not very good because when you do these things, if you read Genesis chapter 12, you know that anybody who comes against Israel, curses Israel, will be cursed. And the curse has fallen on the United States, without a doubt. Now... One of the reasons why I believe that the United States has to decline is to make way for the last world empire. Now, what I'd like to do, first of all, is to show you a picture of symbolism, if you will, of a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, the king of Babylon. This dream was given, the interpretation of the dream was given to the prophet Daniel to give to King Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel was alive during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And you're going to see, if you don't know prophecy, you're going to see how important it is to know the history history of the world empires, where they were, who defeated each other, and then obviously who will be the last world empire. And of course, it will not be the United States of America. So before I do that, let me get to the scriptures so that you'll know what God has to say about this, these future events, and then I'll come back to this photo and connect the dots for you. Now, Daniel, who wrote the book of Daniel, obviously, he tells us this concerning the image that I'm going to be showing connecting the dots. It says this in Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 through 43. And whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. And yet the strength of iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere one to one to another, just as iron does not mix with clay. So in the figure, we see... The Lord showing us that the last portion of the world empire in this figure would be feet and toes. Now, how many toes do you have? <laughs> you have ten toes. How many feet? Well, obviously you have two. But what the Lord was showing us is that the Roman Empire, who was the fourth kingdom, and you'll see the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, and then the fourth was the the Roman Empire, symbolism of the legs in Daniel's interpretation of the dream that God showed Nebuchadnezzar. And so the ten toes is an offshoot or a revived Roman Empire. All right, now let's take a look what Jesus tells us in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verses 12 through 14. And the ten horns, now keep in mind, 
In Daniel, he says there are toes, right? But now, Jesus likens it to ten, what? Ten kings. Look at this. Ten horns or ten kings. It's symbolism for leaders of nations. And the ten horns we saw, saw are ten kings. It's very easy to understand. Well, who are kings? Isn't it a fact that kings rule over kingdoms? So we know who they are. Which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Now, who's the beast? That's the Antichrist. So what happens here? Well, you have a revived Roman Empire that shoots from the first Roman Empire. It will develop into ten toes, an offshoot of the feet and the toes, and ten kings, as we see in Revelation chapter 17, ten kings or leaders of nations are going to come together. They are going to give their power and authority over to this beast or the Antichrist. All right. It says, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So there's no question that these people will shoot up out of a revived Roman Empire. So the revived Roman Empire has to come. Well, obviously, it's already here. Now, what I wanted to show you, first of all, I'm going to take you to the Financial Times. Let me go over here. Keep in mind, this article came out on October 5th, 2009. Take a look at the title, Europe's Plot to Take Over the World. And this has to do with the European Union. Who's the European Union? It is the same nations that used to be in the old Roman Empire. They came together to form a union. It's called the EU or the European Union. Look at this. It says, at last, Ireland has passed the Lisbon Treaty and now the European Union can move forward with its plan of what? World domination. Because that's what they want to do. That was one of the purposes way back in the early 50s that this organization wanted to come together. And Italy was one of the first among the three to come with the idea of forming this union. And obviously now, over the years, we've seen the developments of it and it's standing right now in their plans for world domination. Does this sound familiar? If you read Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel... 7, chapter 7 there, you see the last world empire being the revived Roman Empire. Nothing has to do with America being a revived America. Obviously, it is pretty, uh, pretty out there to say the United States is going to be reborn again as a nation again, a revived America, when it was never even a world empire a first time. Yes, America is powerful, but they never dominated the world. So how anybody could say that they're going to dominate again when they haven't even dominated the first time, it's kind of ridiculous. Now the article goes on to say Tony Blair uh, was going to be one of the people that was they were looking at to be maybe be the first president. Now we know that since 2009, Rome, the revived Roman Empire, has already picked one leader to head up the whole entire organization or the whole union. This is the first time, by the way, in almost 2,000 years that one man has reigned over Europe. And so what does this tell us? Well, obviously what it tells us are two things. Number one, the kingdom that is going to sprout out these ten toes, that these kings, that are going to give all their power and authority over to the Antichrist, the kingdom is already here. It hasn't filtered down to the ten kings yet. But by all accounts, when you take a look at the news and you see the trouble that the, UE or the EU is having, you know that there is going to be something taking place where there will be a division. If we're reading this right, we should be looking... Because the Lord told us in the scripture that they would not adhere together. So if you have 27 or now 28 nations in the European Union, 
we should be looking for the group of ten, of these ten kings that Daniel and Jesus Christ talk about. And when you see those, you will know that you're very, very, very close to seeing the rise of the Antichrist. Because when the ten toes are established, then the little horn will shoot up. And the little horn is the Antichrist. So, one other thing that I wanted to show you. The European Union, when they were established... In the year 2000, they started to print up their own money. It is called the euro. Now, one of the coins that they produce in the euro from the Greece side of the nations there within the European Union, you'll see the Greek coin of a woman riding on a beast. Now, I just want to let everybody know who hasn't seen this already that Jesus Christ talks about a woman riding on a beast. And the woman riding on the beast is significant because what it shows us is the woman is the false church that will be riding on the beast who is the Antichrist. And the Antichrist will later on, when he starts reigning, he's even going to go, go after the woman. And what I mean by that is he's going to dissolve every religion in the world, every one of them, if they don't come and bow down to him as God. We know that because Paul told us that this man of sin is going to go into the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. When they rebuild their temple, they're going to start up their sacrifices. The Antichrist will be going in there, and then he's going to stop the sacrifices. And at that time, he's going to tell everybody that he's God, and you're going to have to take his mark. And if you don't take it, you can't buy or sell anything. We see that in Revelation chapter 13, the warning there. Read Revelation chapter 13, verses 13 through 15. So, do you think that it's a coincidence that the revived Roman Empire, the legs of the old Roman Empire, have now shot up with the ten toes, the European Union, here's their flag, the European Union, the same exact nations that used to be in the old Roman Empire are here again. They have now produced the coins of a woman riding a beast. And since the year 2000, they have chosen this woman riding a beast as their national symbol. And it's everywhere in Europe. It's even in the outside of their buildings. Let me show you what I mean. Now, these are different coins. This is the one that I carry with me all the time. I use it as a witnessing tool to show people, look at what Jesus Christ showed John, the youngest apostle, about the woman riding a beast. It's already here. That's how close we are. You'll see the commemorative coin in 1996. Again, the woman riding a beast. This 1992 German ECU, the European Economic Union coin. A woman riding on the beast. Look at this, all the way back to Germany, the mark note. A woman riding on the beast. There are phone cards in Germany. A woman. And it's the same color, purple and scarlet. You'll see these colors pop up. Look at this. The stamp, the Italian stamp of a woman in scarlet riding over what? Riding over the water, but there's a fish under there. It's almost like riding over the Christians in the last days. But it's a woman riding on a beast. This is a figure of a woman, a massive statue outside the offices in Brussels, Belgium. And here are some other figures. Again, look at this mammoth artwork of a woman riding the beast. So it's all over the place. And here's one that the European Union gave to Russia. And you see the, here's the leg of the woman. Here's her arms outstretched riding on the beast. So the woman riding the beast the figure that what jesus christ showed john the youngest apostle it's already here and we're seeing articles telling us that the roman empire or the eu wants to dominate the world Um, 
the new lie is that the unemployment rate is down to 7%. But it's uh, pure nonsense. Uh, in fact, only 47% of American adults have full-time jobs. And uh, 40% of U.S. workers make less than $20,000 a year. Uh, many people make so little, uh, they must rely on food stamps to buy groceries. Many go to church pantries. Um, I know a family of four, for example, with two jobs who must do this. Uh, the father with a full-time job must also sell blood occasionally. Uh, even at the big banks receive bailouts and make record profits, they pay their bank tellers only $12 an hour before tax, and a minimum wage worker only makes a ridiculous $8 an hour, some even less. Uh, meanwhile, prices go up especially for food, rent, and gas. But the inflation figure is also a lie. Uh, this is the reality on the ground. But the government keeps on lying to deceive foreigners and the rich Americans who buy stocks. Um, if there was a recovery, 47 million Americans would be on food stamps, a record high. And 1.2 million American public school children wouldn't be homeless. Just think about that for a second. How can you concentrate on studying if you're living in a shelter, a car, or a tent? This is an outrage. There are tent cities in every state now. Within 100 miles away, I am, there are several tent cities where people live in the freezing cold and defecate into a bucket. Does that sound like life in the so-called greatest country on earth? Meanwhile, the richest Americans become even richer, and this is all thanks to a government that serves only the richest, while masking over the failures and betrayal of our ordinary Americans by lying about it daily. Uh, the worst aspect of this is you only get worse, because the American economy is just beginning to collapse. China, Russia, and many other countries are moving away from using the U.S. dollar in trade. So when the U.S. dollar loses its status as reserve currency, life will get much harder here. The coming months will show how desperate the situation is, so the lives will become even more insulting to people who have to suffer daily in this situation. All right, so the next prophecy sign that I want to get into, Jesus, among a lot of the signs that you're going to find in Matthew chapter 24, one of the signs that he gave to us was the sign of pestilence, this disease during the last days. And keep in mind, again, if you saw one of these prophecies isolated by itself, then we wouldn't have a case. We wouldn't have a basis of warning people that were very, very close to the second coming. But no other generation has seen all of the signs that Christ warned happen in the same time in one generation like ours. So that's another very, very specific sign. So again, although pestilence is only one of the signs, it is very important. Now, knowing what I know about what the Lord had warned us, I gave you many, many warnings over the years. For example, I even wrote it down in a post today. It says, I warned you to watch for diseases that will mutate and cause many to die as the drugs doctors were using will no longer work, all right? Now, as an example of one of my warnings, I'm going to go back to the year 2009. So in 2009, this is what I wrote. It says, for those of you who already read my prophecy book, you would have read my warnings concerning waiting how new diseases will mutate. So I, I was talking about it back in 2009, and I knew it was going to happen. So I put the link there. You could read the whole post if you want to go and read the whole post. But if you Google my name and put down diseases mutating, you're going to see a lot of my warnings since 2009. And so I wanted to give you a prime example of what I was talking about way back then. And again, in consecutive years about keep warning about these diseases jumping from either birds to humans and humans to animals and vice versa but they're mutating and the drugs are no longer helping so let's go to the news today I'm gonna click the link we'll go right over there and take a look at this 
This is yesterday's news. The new H7 N9 bird flu resists drugs without losing ability to spread. The scientists have found that a mutation in a new strain of bird flu infecting people in China can render it resistant to the key first line treatment drug without limiting its ability to spread in animals. What can I say? I know you know to sound the alarm a lot of people you know say you're scaring people but look at if the Lord said we were going to have diseases just put two to two together if you're watching the news and you see what's going on you see the road ahead of us and we know that obviously there's going to be a lot of people dying during the tribula tribulation period in the last days as a byproduct of diseases and naturally if you see that now there's a progression of these disease mutating they can't get a handle on it what do you think is going to happen during the tribulation period when chaos ensues and the medical system breaks down you're just going to see things spread like wildfire and my warning back in 2009 i want to warn you again watch the news because you're going to see even more of these diseases pop up now I'd like you all who have been following my website to please do me a favor. Do the Lord a favor. What I'm asking you to do is during this season, contact at least five to ten people. Send them my link and tell them about the free book that they could read today. And just do it. Send the emails to those people saying if you want the, up, the most up-to-date book on Bible prophecy, which proves beyond a, a shadow of a doubt that we're in the last day, then download his book for free. And by doing this, we'll be able to spread out across even larger areas and in the hopes that people who read this as they're watching the news, because it's almost on a daily basis now. We're watching the news and we're seeing prophecies being fulfilled. And so by doing this, you're actually doing the work of the Lord the work that he was called you've been called out to do in the first place because as christians what is our function here on this planet aren't we the salt of the earth this is what jesus told us and so if you have the gospel if you have the signs if you have the lord jesus christ living in you and you're harboring it to yourself what good are you we're called to share our faith with other people and I do it with if I'm in a grocery store, if I do it, I'm in a restaurant. I don't care where I'm at. When, when I have an opportunity, I'll share Jesus. But one of the easiest things that you could do is just pass a link to one of your friends or your family members and just say, look at this. Just take a look at it. Weigh the evidence. And you can be the judge. Because God will be judging all of us. And if we reject him, it, then you're rejecting the one that sent him, God. And so the rejection of Jesus Christ will end you into the lake of fire. And that's where you do not want to be. I'm praying that my book will propel people to read about the Lord and drive them to the Bible where they should have been in the first place. God bless.